Toxic heavy metals are everywhere, and they're aging us more quickly. They're in the air we breathe, our soil, food, water, and they can often be found in many of the products we use on a regular basis. Mercury, cadmium, lead, and arsenic are just a couple of the toxic metals you're most likely being exposed to on a regular basis. Over time, they accumulate in our bodies and they can cause cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, and a variety of other diseases. They can potentially cause young children to develop ADHD and a lower IQ, and pregnant women are at risk of a premature birth and even miscarriage. This is a shame. It's a shame because this means that we've become so irresponsible as a species that we're destroying our planet and making it an unhealthy place to live on. But the worst part is that few people are aware that heavy metal toxicity is a big deal, or even a thing, and they live their lives not doing anything about it. So who and what is to blame for this? We can blame it on the mining industry, the fishing industry, the manufacturing industry, globalization, and the list goes on. But forget about that for now. Blaming is not going to solve anything. We can only hope that future generations will take better care of the planet. For now, focus on what you can do to take care of yourself and your loved ones. You can diminish your exposure to heavy metals, and if you've already been exposed, you can detox. It's not hard, and it doesn't even have to be very expensive. As I already said, it's pretty hard to bring your exposure to these heavy metals down to zero, especially if you live in an industrialized country, but there is a lot you can do. You can start by giving up the following foods. Large fish such as swordfish, halibut, and shark. These are contaminated with mercury, and this heavy metal is one of the most toxic. It can also be found in dental fillings, some batteries, and compact fluorescent light bulbs. If you're in a room with a compact fluorescent light bulb that breaks, cover your mouth and nose and get out of there. Low levels of mercury can cause depression, anxiety, irritability, physical tremors, memory loss, and it can even increase your likelihood of developing heart disease and Alzheimer's. This is what low levels of mercury can do to you. As you would expect, high levels of it can cause symptoms that are a lot more severe, such as difficulty breathing, walking, standing straight, and they can even cause delirium, hallucinations, and can even make you suicidal. During the 17th century in France, hat makers suffered from mercury poisoning due to their chronic exposure to mercury from the hat making process. That's where the phrase mad as a hatter comes from. It's okay to eat moderate amounts of small wild caught fish like sardines, anchovies, and Alaskan wild salmon because these are rich in omega-3s and other nutrients, and they don't come with a significant amount of mercury. But definitely try to avoid eating large fish. If your physical and mental health are not motivating enough, consider consuming less fish for the environment. Some scientists say that if we continue overfishing, there will be no more fish in the ocean by 2048. This is pretty sad. Brown rice. Brown rice contains 80% higher levels of arsenic than white rice. Arsenic is bad for your brain and mitochondria, and it's known to cause cancer. But arsenic aside, brown rice contains phytic acid, an anti-nutrient that prevents your body from absorbing minerals. So if you're going to eat one, eat white rice. It's apparently healthier, and it tastes better. I know this may sound strange, I was skeptical of this myself, but in the book The Plant Paradox, Dr. Stephen Gundry mentions that white rice has a lower lectin content than brown rice, and it is therefore easier on the gut. It is no accident that billions of Asians have been stripping the hull off the brown rice to make it white before eating it for thousands of years. The hull has the lectins. Chicken In the plant paradox, Stephen Gundry says that chicken is also contaminated with arsenic, and he even claims that the more chicken a pregnant woman eats, the smaller her baby boy's penis and shorter his attention span. He also claims that chicken consumption can expose the male baby's brain to the mother's estrogen, potentially having an impact on his gender identity. Kale and Cabbage I bet you weren't expecting these two to be on the list. And to be fair, maybe they shouldn't be. Let me explain. Some studies say that both of these vegetables can absorb a heavy metal called thallium if the soil where they were grown was already contaminated with it. Dave Asprey mentions a Chinese study that discovered that harvesting a relatively small amount of cabbage in soil contaminated with thallium could leave the soil thallium free. The cabbage basically purified the soil by absorbing every inch of thallium out of it. Thallium is tasteless and odorless, and it's been used by Russian murderers to poison people, so it's definitely very toxic. But here's the thing, I've found a couple of articles that call bullshit. Sort of. 
One of the articles I found says that the levels of thallium found in most soils are very low, and even though it's true that kale can absorb a lot of it, it wouldn't absorb enough to poison a human. In the short run, I doubt that eating either of these vegetables will cause you problems. But what Dave Asprey is trying to say is that the long-term consequences of consuming foods contaminated with low levels of thallium can be severe. That being said, Stephen Gundry says that kale is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. On the other hand, fitness coach Thomas DeLauer seems to have mixed feelings about kale. He says it's not that nutrient-dense, and your body has a hard time digesting it. He also says that 60% of kale is contaminated with a pesticide called DCPA, which is known to cause cancer. But he also says that kale is high in protein, omega-3s, and contains all 9 essential amino acids, which is rare to find in a plant. Confusing, I know. So, should you eat these vegetables? Honestly, I don't know what to think. Telling you to eat fewer vegetables doesn't feel right, so I'll just tell you to think about what I just said, do your research, and try to make the best decisions that you can. Maybe the best thing you can do is to only buy these two vegetables organic, especially kale, and if you're willing to give up raw cabbage for fermented cabbage, aka sauerkraut, do that. Fermented foods are great for you. The other thing you can and should do is detox. This is how you can do it. Supplement with glutathione. Glutathione is often called the mother of all antioxidants, or the master antioxidant, and it protects your body from the harmful effects of several heavy metals. It also boosts metabolism, helps your immune system, and is good for your brain, liver, and mitochondria. The thing you have to keep in mind is that your body produces glutathione on its own, and if you supplement with it for long periods of time without a break, your body can get used to receiving it exogenously instead of producing it endogenously. So you may want to supplement with it intermittently to prevent your body from getting too comfortable with it. Supplement with Vitamin C Vitamin C can help you detox from lead, and it helps the body produce glutathione. Activated Charcoal Activated charcoal is a form of carbon that can relieve the symptoms of most gastrointestinal problems. It has also been shown to be good for the heart and the kidneys, and it has significantly extended the lifespan of rodents, so it's a big deal. It can help you detox from heavy metals like lead, nickel, and cadmium. Lead affects your brain and mitochondria, and it can cause cognitive and behavioral impairments, seizures, and convulsions. It used to be in paint until the government banned it in 1978. But unfortunately, the houses built in the United States before that year were painted with lead paint, and problems can begin to occur when the paint peels. If your house was built before 1978, have the paint removed by a professional. Cadmium is also harmful to the mitochondria. Fortunately, it's not as present as it used to be because it became apparent that it was extremely toxic, but it's still present in cereals and grains. More foods you should probably avoid. Activated charcoal is considered safe, but before you start supplementing with it, keep in mind that if you take it with your vitamins and minerals and medications, it will often cause them to lose their nutritional value. So remember to take it on an empty stomach and allow 2-3 to three hours before taking your other supplements and medications. Dave Asprey and most of the studies I've found say that it's safe and probably even healthy to take it daily, but if you only want to save it for special occasions, take it when you eat out at restaurants, when you eat bad quality food, and when you travel by plane. Chlorella Chlorella is a single-celled freshwater algae that reduces inflammation and helps your body detox from mercury, which is a big deal because mercury is extremely harmful. That alone should be convincing enough, but that's not all chlorella has to offer. It's high in omega-3 fatty acids, gamma-aminobutyric acid, aka GABA, which is good for anxiety. It's high in chlorophyll, which can help you replenish red blood cells, and it provides your body with sulfur, which is a precursor to glutathione. Modified Citrus Pectin Modified citrus pectin is a form of fruit fiber that has been modified to be more digestible. Studies suggest that this supplement may help prevent the spread of cancer, lower the risk of developing heart disease, it feeds good gut bacteria, reduces inflammation, and it can help you detox from the following heavy metals, lead, thallium, arsenic, and cadmium. Modified citrus pectin is FDA approved, and it seems to be a very safe supplement to take. Some possible side effects are bloating and loose stools, which are not very severe most of the times. But according to Dave Asprey, if you're younger than 40, MCP can interfere with your body's capacity to grow healthy tissues, so he recommends being careful with how much you take, and how often. A low dose of modified citrus pectin is 5 grams. 
10 grams is a medium dose and 15 grams is a high dose. You should probably not be taking high doses of MCP unless you're severely intoxicated and you're in an urgent need to detox. If you're a healthy adult, a low dose just 2 or 3 times a week will do. Sauna If you're not going to take any of these supplements, at least take the time to go to the sauna because sweating can help you detox from lead, mercury, cadmium, and arsenic. And according to Dr. Rhonda Patrick, regular sauna use may improve athletic endurance, it improves insulin sensitivity, it increases neurogenesis, and even increases longevity. That, and it's also very relaxing. Start with 20 minute sessions or so, but as you get used to it, you can try staying for longer periods of time. I like to stay in the sauna for about an hour three times a week, but I always take with me a large bottle of cold water with quite a bit of pink Himalayan salt or iodized sea salt and lemon juice in it. It tastes a little bit like Gatorade, and it keeps me hydrated. If you're going to stay in the sauna for a long time, I recommend doing the same. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.